stack passing, in my opinion, is the most effective way to pass a high level, extremely flexible guard. Often people think of the stack pass as being really slow and grinding and from both knees, but it's actually possible to use it in a very aggressive and fast paced manner that makes it really hard for your opponent to predict. In addition to being very easy to set up, not only does it give you powerful guard passes, but it makes diving for the back extremely easy. And this makes it very hard for your opponent to predict how you're going to attack them next. So first I'm gonna go through the basics of setting up stacks, and then I'm gonna show you guys some extremely unorthodox ways that you can use this to convert into a guard pass and also dive for the back. So the first main way we're gonna get here is often when I'm fighting like a flexible, good open guard, people have their legs a bit higher. And this actually makes their tailbone come up a little too high off the mat, which makes going for stacks easy. So sometimes when I'm approaching here, I'm looking for stuff, I quickly C cup under the ankles like this and fast drive straight and pin the feet over the head. From here, sometimes I can get the knee in the back, I can go into different situations we'll go into later, but this is very easy to hit. Another way you can get here is sometimes my opponent's tailbone is a little bit lower, so it's hard to force the stack because he's keeping his hips kind of heavy. So here I'm looking for Toriandos and things, and as I do this, he starts to try to bring his feet up to my biceps like this, and it makes it easy to drop under because as he resists and tries to bring his feet in, it creates kind of an upward motion on his feet that's easy to get under. And notice how I drop, because my drive is much stronger. If I stay up here, I'm pushing like this, it's very weak. But when I go here and I drive forward, I can create a strong pressure and create a good stack. The next common way to get to this is off of a guard pass attempt. So this can be really off of multiple guard passes, but say you do a throw by or something and you're about to get around and pass the guy's guard, a very common defense people will have is to roll up on their neck and come back down to their guard. If you know this is coming, it's a really easy time to capitalize on a stack. So I throw by, he goes here, and immediately I come and try to catch the ankles. Sometimes if they're hard to get to, I can even go to the knees first, but I wanna to try to get my knee in the back if I can. Some people are so flexible that they, you can stack the feet and they keep their hips down, and we'll get into that later, but anytime his hips come all the way up like this, I'm gonna get a knee in the back, pin here, and then we can start working into different attacks from here. This next way of setting up the stack is one of my absolute favorites, which is circling towards north-south when your opponent keeps their legs tight. People are often used to you trying to pass the guard from the front end, but when people are being very defensive, it's actually easy to circle above them, and this allows you to come in with not only stack passes, back attacks, but also unorthodox ways of dropping directly into the north-south position. So what happens here is he has his knees really tight and he's got a very difficult guard and he's not overextending much. But because he's not overextending, I can kind of just monitor his legs and as he follows, I kind of circle around to this north-south type position. Now usually here, if they have a very flexible guard, their hips won't come up. This is extremely easy here. So he'll try to keep his hips down and his legs will be a little bit wider like this. If he can't bring his feet up, it's actually very easy to dig in to north-south and finish a guard pass from here like this. But very often when I'm here, his legs come up and I can grab the feet and pin him into a stack from here. The bonus is when you attack the stack from the north-south position, you have a lot more pressure on the feet because I'm, I'm further away with the lever. This, this pins the feet. When I'm on this side, sometimes what happens is as you drive, he starts fighting his hips back down and it's very hard to fully get the stack. When I circle around here and the feet follow, it becomes very easy to stack and I can go in here and start setting up different attacks. So now that you understand some of the basics and different ways that you can set up the stack, we're gonna look at five different powerful finish variations and a few which are really unorthodox will usually catch your opponent really off guard. So the first pass we're looking at is the classic stack pass finish. So what happens here is we're moving, I catch the position and lock him up high. Once I get him locked up here, I'm gonna really fast try to shoot this arm across here to catch the lapel. And the other thing I like to do is catch this bicep with the arm if I can, because it uh, blocks a lot of his defenses later on. So once I get here like this, I'm gonna shoot this arm across to get the lapel. And if I can, I'm gonna take my right arm and come around under and also get this lapel here. Now from here, I can use my chest to drive him to one side and I'm gonna dig my head in here. The great thing is as I dig through, my arm is gonna be locked under his back here. So as I come through, it's very hard for his hips to move because they're elevated and loaded on top of my arm. 
So sometimes in the case they're hyper flexible, which Alex is not, but we're gonna work through it anyway, is when you stack their feet up here, their hips stay down on the floor because they're really flexible. So sometimes what you do is you get the foot up here and his hip is down and I'm gonna catch his thigh here like this and it can actually pull him up even if he's hyper flexible. And then I can dig in and start going for the same kind of pass sequences, either with the arm under or sometimes a fast version is to grab this drag it across and come down and in. So the next situation is really useful if the guy's a little bit more flexible. So what happens is again, we stack. And if you could imagine his hips are gonna stay a bit more down on the floor in this case, but it works even easier if he's all the way up. So from here, I'm gonna keep the feet stacked and I switch my shin high up to the ankle near the foot. Now I switch this right hand here so we have him pinned. And from here, my left arm is gonna either grab the hip if his uh, hips are more towards the floor, but if he exposes it, I'll always go high if I can, because the higher, the stronger the grip's gonna be. From here, there's a lot of attacks you can do. A really easy one is I start dragging this across, and I want to expose a grip onto this lapel. And I'm gonna force my way through on a heavy leg drag. I try to keep chest over chest. I slowly dig my way through, come in, and consolidate the pass. This one actually combines really well with the previous pass we did, because what happens is I have the same grips and as I'm trying to drag this over for the leg drag, sometimes they lean their hip to that way a bit, which makes it hard to drag the leg across. But when this happens, it actually exposes the near side to come through to grab the lapel. From here, I can just rush through. If I can, I like to catch this arm like before. I dig my head in dig through and get the pass. Instead of going through with the right arm sometimes, what I do is I actually keep this leg pinned and I come up a little bit higher and now I'm gonna take the arm that was on the hip and I really fast shoot through here and I'm gonna have my fingers pointed out like this and I'm gonna go inside the lapel from here. From here, this blocks off the near side and now my right arm is gonna come underneath the near side foot and I use my shoulder weight to drive his hip down like this and I push through and now I can come in and consolidate the pass. Another really powerful variation of this pass I like to use versus very flexible guards is sometimes when I start to go around looking for Torianos and stuff, as I go, people like to invert through here to come all the way around to defend their guard. I know that's coming a lot of times when I circle, so I'm really fast gonna look for that as they start to invert. So what happens is I start to go here and as I feel that, I shoot early into this position. Now I already have the grip and it's very difficult for here for him to get that leg back in and now I can come in and push, dig in, and start finishing the path. Another really slick attack when you're circling towards the north-south position is sometimes when I come up here like this, what happens is you're here and you want to start stacking and he doesn't want you to do it. So he starts resisting with his feet. So what I do is as I push and I feel that I actually throw his legs up and it gives you a quick moment to drop in. I try to look to get uh, one of my arms on either side of his body and dig my head in. And now if he starts bringing his legs up to try to get his guard back, it's very difficult and I can slowly dig my way in and get the pass. Another extremely powerful finish from this position is as I go around, his legs come up and we get into this kind of stack position. Maybe I wanna to try to shuck it up, but he's being very difficult here, is I'm gonna to look to pick either side, whichever one I think is easiest to get in, and I'm gonna shoot in all the way to his low back and drive my head into his sternum or stomach. So it looks like this here. Once I go here, it's very difficult for that leg to come all the way around and grab my back. And I use my head to tripod him down and dig the arm in and go for the pass. If you guys are enjoying this content, the best way you can help the channel grow is to like and leave a comment. So on top of attacking with all these different guard passes, it's also extremely easy to jump for the back. And there's so many different ways you can do this coming from the front side or from the back side, allowing you to keep your opponent constantly on guard with different threats. So the first back take we're gonna look at, we're starting from the same kind of position here where we have them stacked up. I'm gonna have the hip, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this outside leg and I'm gonna feed it in as a crab hook. The important thing is when I drop, I want his hips to land on my lap. So as I fall, his hips are gonna land here, and now he's resting, and then when I throw this, I can take the back. So what it looks like is I'll be here, I have him stacked, I throw this guy in. I like to switch my right hand to the hip, come up the back, drop, and now I throw this top hook over. And because he's laying on my lap, when I drive down with the seal, I sit him up and come up and take the back. So the next two are set up from the leg drag. So what happens here is I'm trying to drag this leg through and I start to get to the lapel. But as I do this, he opens his hip up. So I'm gonna drop to the ground here and I keep this connected so he can't pummel that leg in. And now my bottom leg can kind of come in and hook on his hip. From here, I can pull down and I'm gonna feed this to a twister hook. Once I get this, by just extending this, it's really easy to pull them up, come up and take the back. So the next one is from the same situation, but we're gonna roll through the other way. So from here, I pull this across. Again, I go for the lapel, 
but as I get the lapel here, his hips open. So instead of dropping, I'm just gonna roll through on my shoulder here. Now my body is wedged under his low back and I use this hand to elevate his hips. So it's hard to get his hips back to the floor. From here, I can usually pummel my leg in to either get a twister hook here like this and kick up and take the back, or I can even do a stomp finish like this and come up and finish. And the last diving back take setup is when we lead the opponent to the backside again. So we're, again, we're here, he follows like this. In this situation, maybe it's hard to keep the feet pinned to lock him down to jump. So this is excellent for that where I can't fully pin, but what I do is I push both feet down and I get both shins on the inside like this. Now it won't even matter because when we do this fast, as if he tries to come out of the stack, it's actually gonna propel me into the back take. So what I do is I come in here, I shoot the both shins in, I'm gonna grab the hip, and now I can use my left hand on the floor for support. And I want my knee to go on the side of his hip. It's gonna be here, but on the other side. And I dive in here like this. Now I can go catch the hook, sit him up and take the back. So one more time, we pin the ankles, come in, grab the hip, jump in and take the back. And remember guys, if you're enjoying the content, the best way to help support the channel is to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks a lot.